are you? Hello, darling. Thank, Thank you, you so oh, much for doing this for us. <laughs> you give me your hand. Say hello to There's your grandma. my guy. <laughs> <laughs> You've grown so much. Oh, that's so big. Come on. Come on. Come on. Thanks, Mom. You've got the package? And you think he'll read it? You did. He's no more spoiled than you were. A good report. We'll be up in the mountains next weekend. Love you, sweetheart. Thanks, Mom. Well, that sounds like a pretty square deal. Do you like camping? He'll find a reason to miss it. Business trip or something. Come on. Where? Help me with something. Open this. Oh, your father used to love to play with all this old stuff when he was little. What is it? It's a dream catcher. Your great-great-grandfather got this from a Sioux medicine man. Set great store by it. Indians? Wow. What does it do? Catches dreams. What'd you think? All of Jacob McKay's life is in this box. Don't cut your ear off. That's a scalping knife. Real scalps? Are there other kinds? If you like that, you're gonna love this. Wow. Does it shoot? <laughs> I expect it does. What was he like? Jacob, I mean. Jacob McKay was a boy about your age when he came west. It's all right here. A diary? A journal. It was your grandpa's, then your father's, now it's yours. Fine. You're a McKay. It's important for you to know about your people, your family. Read this. Great animals like crashing thunder, or maybe the sound of roaring wind. As I, Jacob McKay, write these words, I am in my 75th year. To you, my posterity, my family yet unborn, I leave a record of the most significant events in my life, events that changed me and my thinking forever. I was only 14 in the year 1850, and that was the year our family came west. My father, John McKay, had been a shipwright in New Hampshire his entire life. So he decided to make a new beginning for the family in the gold fields of California. It was late in the fall, and we'd been left behind by the rest of the wagon train. My mother's name was Emma. She was a strong, willful woman, but a loving and caring person. I don't think she was too happy to leave. She was expecting her third child, and the trip had been hard for her. My younger brother, Toby, was excited about coming. He loved it. And I guess I did, too. I'd read quite a lot about the West. Of all the things I wanted to see, I wanted to see a real mountain man more than anything in the world. My family had sold everything before we began the trip. When I left New Hampshire, my schoolmaster gave me this journal to record an account of the journey. Mother's being sick had forced us to stop while she regained her strength. What little my parents owned had to all fit into one small wagon.
you and your brother feed and water the animals? Yes, sir. I did all the work. You did not. You just complained about it. There is enough work to go around here without you arguing about who did what. Do you write every day? I try to. That's good. Writing is very important. Might have been you could have done something with it. Now... Papa. Yes? Are we going to be rich in California? We're not going to California to get rich. God willing, we may create a better life for ourselves. Our life was so terrible in New Hampshire. When you work for someone else, no matter how comfortable you are, you really have nothing. Nothing of any value at any rate. Like the freedom to make your own choices. Do you think we'll meet a mountain man? Not likely. That's probably the only mountain man you'll see. Yeah, ain't none left no more. Any. There aren't any anymore. Obviously wasted my time trying to teach you good grammar. axle's broken. It's snapped in two. Well, can it be fixed? Not before the snow comes. This is more than bad luck, John. Winter's too close. We'll have to build a shelter. I know we can salvage a lot of this. It was too late in the season to go. Everyone told us that. We will survive. God willing. God is not willing. That ought to be clear by now. And what about the children? Jacob gave up a, a chance to have a real education. John McKay, you know about building ships. Not about how to build a life out here. You don't know anything about this country. None of us do. Now we're going to have to pay the price for this dream of yours. Including this child I'm carrying. Emma, th there's plenty of time before... No, there isn't. There isn't. I didn't want to worry you. The babies do. 
in two months. Not four. God, I tried to hide it. Looks like the mules went off that way into the trees. I don't know about the goats. We'll have to look for them. We have to worry about surviving first. ain't worth nothing no more. We're like that, Zeke. Past our time. Could be settlers here already. Fruits, berries, anything we can use. Be careful. Don't go too far. Don't take any chances. Jacob, you're in charge. Whether you find the animals or not, I want you back by sundown. Yes, sir. Watch out for your little brother. OK. Come on, hurry up. you get that? Found him. We'll put him down. We don't have time for that. I'm hungry. Can I have some of these berries we found? I told you that we have to stay. How many have you already had? Not many. Hey, look. Let's get out of here. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe there was no one there. Maybe they all left. Could be something we could use in there. Come on. Look at all this stuff. You know, I think someone lives here. I think we better go. What is this? I don't know. Maybe something to catch fish? Uh, uh, we were just looking for food. I'm oh, happy it's hot there. Me. It means dark wind. That's his name. <laughs> he wants to know what you're doing in his lean to. Most of my life, I yearned to see a real mountain man. And then, there he was. It was like coming face to face with your dreams. Well, speak up, boy. Listen, you D. What you doing with the man's possibles? Uh, our wagon was, uh, was destroyed by a bear. We were looking for supplies. Re Monto. Wayanka. Oh, eh? Monto Wayanka? Oh. Oh, oh. Mm. Oh. The old man's a little angry at you for messing with his possessions. The dark wind here is a medicine man for the Sioux. They regard that bear you saw as a spirit of the land. They call him Walking Thunder. And it ain't safe for you to be out on your own. Where's your kin? Uh, it's not far. Hours still till dark. They'll be here.
You should have told me about the baby. Yeah, I suppose I should have. But you were intent on going. I, well, I thought you wanted a new life, too. I've known for a long time that you weren't happy. You wanted something more. I didn't come because I wanted it. I came because you wanted it. That's how it works when you love someone. Bar done you in pretty good, didn't he? Name's Murdoch. Found these two rummaging through the old man's digs. Ain't too happy about it either. See? A real redskin, Mama, just like Jacob read about in his book. I thought he was gonna scalp us, sure. Don't suppose you folks got any vittles, do you? We have sufficient for our needs. Well, that ain't exactly what I meant. See, the old Indian and me, we could could use a hot meal if you're so inclined. Yeah, watch. Uh, I'm... We're... We're obliged for all your help. Won't you stay and take supper with us? Both of you. Thank you kindly. When I walk in, I hold hope in you. Woken Thunder existed from the beginning. The ancients knew that his strength and power were of the Great Spirit. His footsteps... His footsteps were like the rushing of great waters. His roar, a thunderclap in the night sky. The bear, walking thunder, had dominion over the land. Dominion. Dark Wind was a medicine man to the Sioux Nation. He spoke for Walking Thunder. He sang the death song for his eldest son. A great bear had taken his son's life in sacrifice for the old man. And right here in these very mountains. Dark Wind's son was known as the tribe's greatest hunter, but this day, Dark Wind himself had found meat for the tribe. It was a she bear. He didn't know he'd hunted and killed the mate of Walking Thunder himself. The son had thought his father was in danger. The very act of trying to save his father. now to be an act of ultimate sacrifice. His son was a swift runner, but could never be faster than walking thunder. He said it was ordained by the Great Spirit. Dark Wind knew that the outcome of this deadly race was already decided. His son would be offered in the old man's place for his transgression. late. You're welcome to stay the night with us and join us for breakfast in the morning. Folks, uh, I ain't one to stick my nose where it ain't wanted, but uh, I'll be heading up the Horse Creek Rendezvous. Now, they ain't got an axle up there, but they got a few things that you're going to need to get through the winter. If you have a mind, I can do some trading for you. We don't have much money. It don't take much money. We do need supplies, John. Let me go. I can watch out for us. I can take on the responsibility. You're always saying that. Jacob, you're only 14. 14 is old enough. Please? 
Well, um... I can do it, Papa. Well, all right. Jacob will go with you. If that's all right, Mr. Murdoch. It was a dream come true. I was going to the last mountain man rendezvous with a real mountain man. Remember, we need a cow, a milk cow. With a baby on the way, it's important. That's all the money we have. You be careful. My parents were concerned for me, though Papa hid it. But I wasn't afraid. I knew I'd be all right with someone as great as Abner Murdoch. Bring me something, Jacob. Don't forget. <laughs> Why would I bring you anything? Oh, forget. Abner told my parents that Dark Wind would stay and help them start to build a shelter. The medicine man was old and didn't move with the tribe to the winter hunting grounds anymore. Good luck. Thanks. Don't go, Doctor. Don't go, Carl. Or I can't be. Abner Murdoch knew more about living in the wilderness than anybody I'd ever known before. Certainly more than my father. He said if you want to survive out here, you had to think like the animals think. You missed. Matter of perspective. Can't always believe what your eyes tell you. There was no time for venison on the trail, but Abner said wild chucker was better anyway and easier to clean. Yeah, it looks about ready. Let me have that. Yeah. It was the most delicious thing I'd ever tasted. Thank you. Abner told me about his life as a mountain man, how he'd come from Illinois at 14, my age, how he'd learned about surviving and living in the Rocky Mountains from the Indian nations. Yep, he'd just about done it all. He was one of the last of them. Men like Jim Bridger and John Coulter. Ah, Murdoch was the last real mountain man. He taught us about living in the open and what it meant to be part of the land. At the time, I remember thinking how much my father really didn't know about life out here. It seemed to me my father wasn't a real man, at least not the kind of man Abner was. Abner knew everything, and I wanted to be like him more than anything in the world. I wish my father knew as much as you did. What makes you think you don't? 
Well, I just mean that you'll know more about surviving than Papa ever will. He's just a boat builder from New Hampshire. Well, I don't know how to build a boat, do you? You think living life in the saddle makes you a man? You don't. It takes more guts sometimes to raise a family than it does to, to run off to the mountains. Well, I, I just mean that you, you'll never be a Jim Bridger or anything. Oh, you know Jim Bridger, did you? Yeah. Yeah, I know everything about him. You know, how he found Yellowstone and started Fort Bridger and killed more crow warriors than any man alive. Now, where'd you hear all that? Oh, I, I didn't hear it. I read it in this. What? This? What's it say? Oh, it says, Jim Bridger, king of the mountains. King? Jim Bridger? I hardly think so. He didn't do none of that. John Coulter's the one nearly lost his hair running through Yellowstone. Liver Eater Johnson killed more crows than Bridger ever even seed. And the only reason they named a Ford after him was because he won a bet with a politician in a poker match. I thought that... Best get your facts straight, boy. For that mouth of yours gets you in some serious trouble. Sweetheart, you fetch me some water. have all the foundation logs in today.
How much? <laughs> uh, how much for what? What do you mean, what, you squinty out run? The horse! Uh, he's not for sale. Everything's for sale around here, boy. Now I want that horse. How much? Uh, he's not mine, I'm just watching him. <laughs> you stole him, huh? No, it's Mr. Murdoch's. I, I'm just watching him. I guess Mr. Murdoch won't mind if and I watch his horse for a while now, really. Yes, I do. I'm sorry. No need to apologize, boy. This is rendezvous. They get all kinds here. You do have to be careful, though. Got me some corn whiskey. You want a swig? Uh, I don't drink. I didn't think so. You mind if I do? Yeah. Ain't nothing better. Or, uh, closer anyway. Woo! Whatever you need, friend, it is all here. Do not be afraid to ask. Huh? Good Pennsylvania steel, that trap. Very nice. What we need are building supplies. Tenpenny nails, hammer, saw. Have it all I do and more. Best prices at rendezvous. Angus Campbell will not be undersold. Um, do you have any hard candy? Well, sure. Then I'd be a sorry merchant without sweets now, wouldn't I? Here you are, laddie. One free sample. How much for the salt? Dollar and a quarter. Give me the bag of candy, I'll give you a dollar. Sold! Just head on over and pick out that milk cow your pa wants. I don't know anything about cows. Well, I sure don't. If you ask me, it ain't a cow your pa needs. What your pa needs is a rifle. Got a shotgun. That ain't a rifle. Out here, you don't have a rifle, you ain't gonna survive. Now these cap and ball pieces are all right, but you lose a percussion cap, it ain't no better than a club. Now this flint lock works no matter what. You lose the flint, you just pick another one up off the ground. Well, you like them, do you? It's beautiful. Colonel Colt's Navy revolver. You just load it up on Sunday, you shoot it the rest of the week. <laughs> That's the gospel, my friends. 36 caliber, six shot Navy coat. Finest sidearm ever made. Won't find a better milk gun on the frontier. Nor a more expensive one. Took me more than a year of trapping to earn this one. Hey, 
May I take a look at that? It's nice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, we'd, uh, I'd like to look at the Kentucky rifle, please. <laughs> Done, my friend. You know quality when you see. Now, let's take a look at the workmanship. Go on and touch it. Rub, it. Rub your hands on it. Rub it. It won't bite you. <laughs> I've seen it. It's got a bag full of gold sovereigns. I've seen them. Lakota Sioux believe it's a great spirit. I seen it once, and believe you me, once was enough. It stood near 12 foot tall. Arms outspread alone measured more than the length of an Indian Cayuse pony. I ain't never seen the like of it before nor since. Hell, fire the skin alone had fetched more than a hundred gold dollars. They all heard of this ghost bear. No one has actually seen it. Must be the liquor talking. Ain't no liquor talking, Ansel Richter. What do you know, anyway? I tell you, I seen it myself with my own two eyes. Bigger than the mountain it was, too. You hear it, you know why the engines call it walk-in thunder. He's right. I've seen it, too. Wow. Oh. You seen the bear? You seen it around here? Now, friends, you know how youngins are. He just wished he'd seen the bear. He wants to kill it with his pocket knife. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Let the boy speak. Maybe he has seen it. Maybe he did. Isn't that right, boy? Uh. Well, maybe I, I haven't seen it. <laughs> maybe you just smelled him, huh? <laughs> now, what, what, what exactly did you see? Huh? I didn't see anything, sir. Sir? <laughs> been caught a lot of things in my life. Never been called sir. This isn't the army, you know. Well, maybe that's because <laughs> sir is a sign of respect, something that scalpers ain't accustomed to. Maybe you haven't heard, but scalping's illegal. And I've never done anything illegal in my life. Now, Angel, that ain't exactly true. I seem to remember you and your amigos doing some time for some long-distance target shooting on some Blackfeet. <laughs> you never change, do you, Ab? You always thought you were better than the rest of us. Well, you ain't bare squat to me. Well, now, bare squat is something I reckon you know a thing or two about. Of course, the rest of what you're saying is just that. Don't need to. Don't need to call a skunk a skunk, neither. <laughs> you can already tell by the smell. <laughs> How does that feel, squaw man? Get him! Shouldn't have called you, sir.
track. What is it? Riders moving ahead of us. Well, what does that mean? It means we ain't alone. Somebody decided to tag along. Could be after our goods. Well, you said they're ahead of us, though. I... They're not following us. That's an old buffalo hunter's trip. Figure out where the herd is going, and you wait for them. Mr. Murdoch, can I ask you a question? You have a mind? At the rendezvous, what did they mean by squaw man? I took me a Sioux woman to wife some years back. I married an Indian woman? Married's a white man's term, but it was something like that. Richter tried to offend me by saying it, but ain't no offense to be taken. So where is she? I left her in the youngin. A long time ago. I weren't much good at taking care of them. They always had a roof over their head and plenty to eat. But it takes more than that. So you, you think those tracks are people following us? Probably. Well, don't you think we should keep the fire low? And, I mean, not attract any attention? You're getting gold tonight, don't you want to stay warm? Well, I'd, I'd rather be safe. Why don't you get some sleep? You tricked me with the fire. Well, I figured they'd move on us late. You used me as bait. Well, you don't catch nothing without bait. Yeah, well, what if it shot first? Well, they didn't. I was starting to understand about the laws of the wilderness. If you aren't the hunter, you're the prey. Abner Murdoch lived by those laws. Down there by the creek. What? Let's get a closer look. Shoot them, are you? Well, they're not gonna make it through the winter anyway. Please don't.
You gotta take what Providence sends your way. Show dark wind. Be finished in a week or so. As soon as I get those supplies they're bringing. Yeah, well, they'll be here soon. Winter's in the air. You can smell it. Mama, you think Jacob's been killed by now? Don't you talk like that, Tobias McKay. Your brother's just fine, and he's going to be here soon. And it's killed, not kilt. Mind your grammar. I didn't mean nothing. Anything by it. Besides, he could have been scalped. Oh, horse feathers. Go on and do your chores. Oh, all right. Startle you. We've been traveling for a while. Could do with some food if you have any to spare and get out of this weather. You run into trouble? Some. Bloodcoat had his rifle backfire. Almost took his head off. Well, he's lucky though. <laughs> Just took off a little piece of his eye. Well, we have a little stew. If you have a mind to partake, I wouldn't turn you away. That would be kind of you. We'd be obliged. This wound is deep. Yeah, took him by surprise. He never seen it coming. You did this with your own rifle. He doesn't talk. He can't. His vocal cords have been severed. Well, cut real good by Blackfoot a couple years back. Ain't never gonna talk again. Ever. Ain't that right, half-breed? Go ahead. Show her. Buffalo boy, buffalo. We haven't had much luck either. Oh, we, we hear there's been a bear scene in this area. Have you run across it? I'd say. You wrecked our wagon. You didn't shoot him, did you? You're not after the bear, are you? Not exactly what we're after, but if we see him, we might take him. So, are you folks planning on staying here? Might be. You'll need some more supplies, I reckon. Jacob and Adner went to get some more. Pop already paid for them. Is that a fact? There are more settlers coming. We just happen to be the first to arrive. An advance party. That's funny. I didn't see any of them. I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't smoke. It's not a habit we hold with. God-fearing folk. <laughs> Don't suppose you drink either. <laughs> it's not my place to tell you what to do. This is our home. I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't indulge in front of the boy. Didn't mean any disrespect. You know, being Christian folk, you better watch yourselves. The Indians don't care what God you believe in. They'll take your scalp as easy as the next. I see you feel the same. Indian ain't folk. Don't take scalp no more. Ain't no money in it. But if and they're ever worth something again, 
There's one to pay for the meal. <laughs> I think you better go. We may come back this way again. You never know. See how you're doing. thought about it. I guess me when I'm older. Or, or maybe even my son or even his son. Getting the family right quick there, ain't you? Never had much need for book learning myself. I do know how to write my name, though. Mama says everyone should read and write. Well, I suspect she's right. Not much need for it out here, though. It's more important to learn how to read the signs. Signs? So what I've been teaching you, boy. This country will speak to you if you... if you know how to listen. <laughs> Like you said, they got gold. I can smell it. Why don't we just go in there and kill them? Steal the gold. They don't know their backside from a box banjo no how. But people will know about some now. I still say we should go in there and scalp them. Blame it on the Sioux. No. No surprise. So no one would be so either. I'm fine. We thought you were scalped. Yeah, we're scalped. Don't you talk like that. Oh, thank you for bringing him back safe. Or no problem. Oh. Your husband's making fine progress on your cabin. Yeah, John went hunting. Where's the cow your father asked you to buy? Uh, we needed this more. So I, uh, I decided not to buy the cow. Jacob, that was all the money we had. Papa doesn't understand how to survive out here, Mama. It's probably my fault, Mrs. I expect I give the boy some ideas. Well, I'm going to let you be the one to tell him. <laughs> some men come here last night. They came here. Jacob, do you bring me anything? Now, why would I bring you anything, huh? Huh? Jump! Jump! Woo! <gasps> What those men want, Miss McKay? Oh, food. One of them was hurt. How so? He said his uh, gun backfired on him. Where'd your husband go off hunting to? North. Maybe I'll head on up there myself, under my hand. Is something? Oh no, there's no problem. Well, I'm much obliged to you. Very welcome. <laughs> Son, I want you to look out for your mom and your brother, you understand? Put up that rifle, keep a sharp eye out, and don't take no chances. Something wrong? It could be.
on up here if you want to keep your hair. Oh, yeah. Who is it? I ain't sure. You stay here, I'm gonna double back around. debt, Mr. Murdoch. No need for Mr. Just Murdoch will be fine. You folks is lucky you made it this far. These Uintas is rough territory. You know, I'm heading out to Fort Bridger for the winter, but I'll be glad to stay and help you finish your cabin before I go. You're a good Christian man, sir. Well, I don't reckon I'm all that Christian, Mrs. <laughs> but I do believe you folks deserve a, a fair shot. I know I'm not as wise out here as you. But we'll manage. You do think those Crow warriors will be back? Weren't Crow that tried to kill you this morning. But I thought... You're thinking like a settler. This ain't New Hampshire. Well, how did you know it wasn't the Crow? The Sioux, the Cheyenne, the Arapaho. They all have seams running down the inside of their moccasins. Points turned in so the prints look pigeon-toed. The Crow's hide is tanned so smooth there ain't no sign of a seam nowhere. Well, then it was another tribe. Oh. The prints I saw this morning had a seam running right down the middle. Weren't from any of the nations. Them's from white men. The men from the rendezvous. That's a good guess. Papa and Abner finished what was left in just a few days. For the first time, I noticed a kind of new respect between them. Abner told us that the Crow War Party was still around. They were on a hunt. According to Dark Wind, the spirit of the land was with us. And Crow and Sue had been blood enemies since before the beginning of time. Watch your head, Jacob. Good work. things to bless your lodge with. Salt from the deer lick, so as you'll have savor in your life. Jerked elk meat, so as you won't know hunger. And a dream catcher to hang above your door. What's a dream catcher? The Sioux believe that dreams fill the lodge and then come true. A dream catcher catches the bad dreams while you sleep. Because only good dreams come true. After a few days, Abner said if those men were coming back, they'd have been here by now. <laughs> Trail. It ain't much, but it's filling. Much obliged. Do you have to go? 
If I'm gonna make it to Bridger before the snow fills that pass, I gotta leave now. You take care to remember everything. Travel safely. Lay in all the stories you can and listen to the medicine man. He knows more about these parts than anybody. Keep your scalp. We'll be just fine. He knows more than any of us, Papa. to do. Oh, Mama, do I have to? I need some firewood. Please bring it to me. Now! through his shoulder. He's lost a lot of blood. They could be coming here, following him. Who? Whoever did this. Are we gonna fight him, Papa? I hope we don't have to, son. But we best be ready. I wish Abner was here. He knew what to do. Does he still need his moccasins? Toby McKay, please go out and help your father. Got my lawn done. Well, at least that'll slow him down. Not much. If Abner was here, he... He'd know what to do? Suppose he would. I don't know much about this sort of thing, do I? No. I mean, you know a lot of things. Your mother was right. 
I took you away from everything you ever loved. Papa, I'm sorry about the gun. I mean, buying it instead of the cow. Looks like you were right now, doesn't it? You're becoming a man. I forget about that sometimes. It's important you learn to make your own decisions.
find it? There isn't any gold. You lie. I seen it. He's not lying. There isn't any gold. Where is it? said there ain't no gold. Well, looks like you whooped him some. Behind you! Hey, why'd you come back? I don't know. A friend persuaded me, I guess. It's time we laid in some stores for the winter. Which means you have some work to do with that rifle. The man had decided to head north and hunt. Papa didn't want to leave us alone, but he knew that we needed the meat. They had to lay in enough to last the winter. They left that very day. I was in charge, my father said. That scared me some. Because none of us knew what happened to those men, or where they went. Closer to her time. The night it happened, we were all alone. Jacob, you get me some hot, boiling water, honey. I need you to help me, sweetheart. I don't know how. Maybe is isn't time yet. Jake, what are we gonna do? I don't know. Toby and I tried to help as best we could. Then the old Indian dark wind came into the cabin and took charge. Toby and I were pretty happy to see him. That old man stayed right next to Mother, helping her through her ordeal. sister.
ناروهی چون چاره ما I didn't know until many years later when I learned some of the language of the Sioux that the old man was praying for us that day. I still remember that prayer and the old man's voice as he chanted it. Walking thunder, hear me. The voice I send is weak, but it's my heart that speaks. Give them the strength to walk the soft earth, that they may face the wind and walk the good road to the day of quiet. Hear me, because the time is accomplished as you have shown. It was the most beautiful prayer I think I'd ever heard before or since. Dark wind had seen the future, and the day my sister was born, he went to meet it. down there in the ground barter. Or not kill him. You stay here. Get in. We hit that, Chris. I know it. on that far.
Glad he did. He came to help us. I just had a feeling, son. You done good. Both of you. I couldn't believe that my father had come after us. I never looked at him quite the same ever again. He was more of a man than I'd thought. To this day, I can still see Dark Wind's face as he followed the great bear. Abner said Weasel and Bloodcoat had run off when my father came back. Abner told us that he was going to make sure they didn't come back. Ever. Abner said he'd come back in the spring to check on us. Said he'd take me along when he came back. And then he gave me his Navy Colt revolver that I had admired so much. Said a man needed a good sidearm out here. I knew I'd never be a mountain man like him, and I told him so. He told me I'd do better to be a man like my father anyway. That a real man was someone who took care of the folks who counted on him. As I watched him ride off, I knew he was right. I never saw him again. Finished? All of it? How'd you know I'd read it? I figured you wouldn't. But your father did. Seems he's right. For me? What'd you think? Yes, for you. 
Now write in it. I will. I realized I was more like my father than I'd ever thought. Because what's really important isn't something you own. It isn't something you hold in your hand. More than that, it's staying with the land, working hard, and raising your family. Those ideals don't make a man weak. They make you a man. There were a lot of stories we heard about the old man and the bear in later years. The mountain men used to say that the bear called Walking Thunder had died that day, and the old medicine man buried him in a secret place. And on that very spot was born the most pure spring water ever found in the Rocky Mountains. Medicine men of all nations years later insisted that Dark Wind healed the great bear with his powerful medicine, and the two roamed the mountains together. And finally, at the end of their lives, they were taken to the great spirit's bosom without ever tasting death. The Sioux have a saying, what is life? It's the flash of the firefly in the night. It's the breath of the buffalo in the wintertime. It's the little shadow which runs across the tall grass and loses itself. Life is not long or short. It just is. But I like to think that Walking Thunder lived for many more years, longer than any bear has ever survived. To me, he is the spirit of this land. And like the land, like our family, that spirit goes on forever. Thank you.